That thing is the biggest transformer I have ever seen. Alrighty, today we are going to be doing a quick overview video of a 48 volt DC grow watt 12,000 watt split phase low frequency all in one inverter that I just bought. So stick around. Try saying that five times fast. All right, so what we're looking at here is a multifunctional split phase output off grid solar inverter. It's integrated with an MPPT solar charge controller, a low frequency pure sine wave inverter, and it also can act like a UPS all in one machine, which sounds pretty damn awesome to me. All right, so this video is just gonna be kind of like a quick overview and what it all looks like, and then we are going to void the warranty and rip open the top and take a look at the guts because I, I kind of want to see what's on the inside, you know, wire sizes, you know, I want to see why this thing weighs 165 pounds. Before we kind of get into it, just a couple quick features that this thing does have, all right? So obviously this is is a 12,000 watt inverter. So that means 6,000 watts per leg in the split phase configuration. You have the capability to hook this up to the grid, not supply the grid with power, but you can supply AC to this and use it like a UPS and you can also use it to charge your batteries up to 100 amps. If you don't want to hook up to the grid to use it as a UPS or as a charger, you can use it as an off-grid inverter, which I will most likely do. So then, obviously, I would be connecting solar panels to it. So it allows up to 150 volts DC in for the solar side and up to 120 amps. There's actually two different PV inputs on it, PV1 and PV2. It comes with a USB cable, some monitoring software that you load on your computer. I would imagine you can download this as well a Wi-Fi dongle so you can kind of connect to it and remote monitor and change everything on the inverter. And of course, a user manual that tells you everything about it and how to hook it up. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of other options that this thing has, but we're not gonna get into all of those features, at least in this video. Pretty much what we're gonna do is a quick overview and then open it up and take a look at the guts because I really just wanna see what everything looks like. Now, if anybody is interested in this inverter, I went to signaturesolar.us and purchased it from there. I physically called them and talked to James, John, and some other lady, I don't remember her name. All super nice people, very helpful, and they will, they'll hook you up with, you know, whatever you want. And if you do end up going there, make sure you say Average Joe sent you. There's no affiliation or anything like that. I'm just really excited about this inverter. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. And I think we're gonna start with the bottom side. All right, we're gonna take a look at the bottom side first. So we're gonna go left to right, all right? So first thing we got over here is a remote port. Right next to that, we have a smaller intake fan. Right above that, we have the 48 volt DC battery connections. And these do have the covers, which do come right off. And this comes off by turning the flathead screw type terminal right here. And it came with two nuts. It did not come with any washers or anything like that. I would definitely suggest a flat washer and a lock washer whenever you attach your battery terminals. Right over here, we have your Wi-Fi and GPRS port and a USB port. And if you wanna hook the inverter up to the computer, you basically use this port right here and load the software that came with the inverter. Right above that, we have your generator contact switches. For some reason before, I thought these were dip switches, but they're not. This is basically for uh, hooking up like a generator or something like that, supplying this with AC power through these ports right here. You can basically control the generator, you know, depending on how it's set up through these connections right here. And right next to that, we have a BMS communication port and an RS-485 port. BMS is for lithium batteries, and a lot of lithium batteries do have a BMS, and the inverter is capable of 
of communicating with the BMS, depending, I guess, on the BMS that you have. And there is quite a few different settings that the inverter has based on the communication protocol for that BMS. Next to that, for the AC side, we have an 80 amp circuit breaker for the input, and we have two 63 amp circuit breakers for the output. Down here across the bottom is your AC input, output, and PV input. For your AC, it does say 240 right here, but I think in the manual, you know, you can adjust this just a little bit. Anyway, you have a hot one, hot two, and your ground lug. And next to that is the AC output. So hot one, neutral, and hot two. Hot one and hot two is 240. And if you wanna use this as a split phase inverter, then of course you would add your neutral. So these two legs right here would be 120 and these two legs right here would be 120. Or if you just wanted to use this for 120 only, then you would just use hot one and neutral or hot two and neutral. And again, this does say 240, but in the manual, you can adjust this, I think all the way down to 208 volts. And the last thing is the PV input. Now I will say real quick that there's actually two different models of this inverter. One is a high voltage charger and one is a low voltage charger. I got the low voltage charger and what that means is the input from the solar can take up to 150 volts. The high voltage one can take up to 250 volts. I probably should have gotten the high voltage one, but I really didn't think it through very much whenever I bought this. Anyway, this one's gonna work out great for my needs anyway. Um, it's just future PV input, you know, could benefit from the high voltage side. For the example, what I'll use real quick is PV1 would be kind of closer to the inverter, like your roof mount, and then PV2 could be much further away, you know, like a ground mount out in the yard or wherever. The benefit of having the high voltage charger is, you know, you can use smaller wires, higher voltage, longer runs. That's pretty much it. And you do have a chassis ground lug right here. Oh, and it does come with this cover right here, which I already removed, and that just goes right there. All right, so that should be pretty much everything on the bottom. If for some reason I missed something, let me know in the comment section. And right up here on the top is your main LCD screen and your on and off button and stuff like that. So right up here on the left, your on and off button. So if you go down, that's inverter on. Center is off and up is the power saver mode, which is kind of cool if you're using this for like a, a backup or something like that. You can turn this on and the inverter is on, but it's technically off and won't be doing anything. But as soon as the load turns on or you try to use a device, it will turn on and then power whatever you're trying to power. Next to the LCD screen, there's a few buttons. You have escape or kind of like a back or return button, up, down, and enter. And then there's a few LEDs up here, you know, kind of telling you what's going on. There's AC, inverter, charge, and fault. And I guess once it's all powered up and how you have it set up, you know, you'll have different things running across the screen. And right up here towards the top, you got two really big exhaust fans, and I would imagine the transformer is right back behind here. So these should provide excellent cooling to keep that cool. And then on both sides, we have a hole here, hole here, and hole here for mounting it. A big handle to help you lift this sucker up and mount it to the wall. Holes here for cooling and holes here for cooling. And this one also labels all the specifications of this inverter. The other side is pretty much the same. Alrighty, so the next thing we are going to do is void the warranty real quick and pop the top and take a look at the inside. To take the lid off of this thing, there is six Allen head screws, three on each side. And the size of that is number five. Now, before we void the warranty, there is the sticker. And of course, it does say, do not remove the label unauthorized. I am definitely not authorized, but we are going to open it anyway. Hopefully GrowWatt isn't watching because if I ever have a problem, I'm gonna need the warranty. So I'm gonna try to remove that sticker as delicately as possible. All right, so I shouldn't have to tell you, but if you, you know, rip off the sticker and open this up, you're going to void the warranty. Don't do this at home unless you wanna void the warranty. Boom! Look at that transformer. That has got to be the biggest transformer I have ever seen. Holy crap. That's my hand next to that thing. 
All right, anyway, uh, let me do a quick little pan over the top and then we'll kind of take a closer look. All right, now that this thing is open, I shouldn't have to tell you this. Again, you guys are big boys and girls and I'm not gonna tell you what you can and can't do. I would suggest not sticking your little grubby fingers in there because there's a bunch of capacitors in here and they probably are full of those angry pixies and they just want to get out. So don't go in there touching anything. I'm probably going to stick my fingers in there anyway, but let's get to it. All right, so you got the two fans up top, the split phase transformer, and then a couple of circuit boards, etc. right back here. All right, so I'm not gonna pretend that I know everything in here because I hardly know anything about any of this stuff. All right, so we're gonna start back here where the battery connections are. So it looks like they are using a solid bar connection, uh, both positive and negative. I'm not exactly sure what the bar is made out of, whether it's, you know, a coated copper or coated something else. And those go down underneath the circuit board and it kind of looks like they're attached. Well, I can't really see the negative, but the positive is attached to an aluminum heatsink, which I will show in just a minute. In addition to the bars, they're using a double cable. These go down to another board down below, which I'll show again in just a second. I can't see the battery cable size, but the AC wires are eight AWG. These look to be about the same, so they're probably eight gauge as well. So two of those, uh, both positive and negative. I'll go ahead and zoom in on the other connections, the bar connections and where these go real quick. It kind of looks like all these transistors or FETs or IGBTs are attached to that as well. Again, I don't know what those are. If anybody else does, you can put a comment down below. And also underneath this board, in between those two aluminum heat sinks, it looks like there's a bunch of big capacitors. All right, so this board that has the chokes or inductors, whatever those guys are right there, that must be either part of the DC charger or solar charger because of those connections down there. Starting from the left to right, it looks like PV1 positive, then negative, PV2 positive, then negative, and then battery positive and negative. So this board right here must be the MPPT charger. And also what I've been doing is checking the tightness on all of these wires and everything appears to be um, connected pretty solid. So on the back of these circuit breakers, these ones right here are your input and that goes to this board right here. The output, they go oh, to that same board as well. So there you go. Somebody might be able to make heads or tails of this, but I do not. And then finally, back here, we have this ginormous split phase transformer. Now, I'm not 100% sure, you know, how these do their voodoo magic, but what I think it does is it sends over 48 volts AC, and then it goes through the transformer and does its voodoo magic, and then sends back out 240 volts. There's also gonna be a center tap in here, which allows you to connect your neutral to. All right, the fans up here are 200 to 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz, and each one draws around 0.2 of an amp. The smaller intake fan that's on the bottom side, all the specs are on the other side, so I can't quite get to it to see what it says. All righty, that is the 12,000 watt grow watt split phase low frequency inverter. What do you guys think of the guts on the inside? I mean, I don't really know what I'm looking at. There's a lot of copper wire in there. Whew. All the bus bars and wires and all that kind of stuff looked appropriately sized. 
Um, everything was connected, you know, solid. I don't see anything wrong with that. I guess the, the most jankiest thing that is on the inverter is all the input connections. I wish there was something like a little bigger, you know, a little more solid, you know, with bigger screw terminals, but that would be my only complaint at this time. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and I will reply as required. All right, that's pretty much all I got. I'm gonna throw the cover on this real quick and then call it a night. The next video is probably going to be hooking this up to some batteries and at least doing a test run. Obviously, my battery is still a little small in my opinion and uh, I can only probably output 100 amps. So as long as we don't go over that, you know, I won't heat anything up. I would still like to stay below that because the wires off of my battery packs are only 10 gauge and there's two what is that like 60 amps i think i could push that you know up to 80 and be just fine 100 for a short time anyway i'm, I'm i digress sorry next video is going to be hooking this up to the battery packs you know making sure it works and hopefully going through some of the features and then doing some test runs and all that kind of stuff so if you want to see that make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification not that it's gonna let you know i uploaded a video anyway but it'll make me feel better all right that's pretty much all i got don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you on the next one and right below, yeah. Uh, this is for, this is basically if you're gonna use. Um, next to that for the AP, um, the benefit of having the higher voltage input. Hey, here's my cat. You know, like a copper coated copper, bleh. Hell, they could be LGBTQ for all I know. It has the ape, ape ability. Um, ow, I just totally stood up and hit my back underneath my, ow, island and that really, hurt. Son of a bitch. Oh, I wish I had this up on the desk now. I'm tired of squatting down here already. Um...